Hey guys, I'm happy to say that my grind for Paragon 1300 is finally over and in this video I'm going to share the key moments I had along my push and also I'm going to be showing the combat rating which I gained um, by equipping all of the Inferno 6 items at the end of the video. So before we go over my plan which I made going into this week, I just want to address one of the most common questions I get when doing a push like this and that is, why do you actually go for such a crazy push? Wouldn't it be better for you to just wait and for the server Paragon level to go up and you'd have a much easier time grinding for it next week? And this is absolutely 100% true and actually I recommend most players to do this. At the end of the day, the game is designed in such a way that no player could be way ahead of everyone else and players are always able to catch up. And I feel like this keeps the game alive for longer because new players, they want to feel like they can always catch up to people if they just start playing the game and grinding for a few months. So I think that having this design, especially for a mobile game like Diablo Immortal, is definitely the right way to go. Personally, anytime I've played ARPGs, I've liked to be as competitive as I can be. And granted, there aren't really that many avenues to be so competitive in this game. Um, I mean, let's face it, the game is um, pretty pay to win and based around resonance and a lot of different aspects, especially PvP. But um, this feels like quite a good way to kind of um, gauge how you're doing against other players and just try to be competitive and kind of get the spirits going on the server as well. Just speaking about my server, I think every time I've gone for one of these pushes, I've noticed that a lot of players suddenly start to want to grind and I find them either joining my party or making their own parties and kind of try push as fast as possible and they actually message me a lot of time and say um, Mao I'm gonna try kind of compete with you this week let's see who can reach server first and I find it's just a really friendly and competitive environment to have so um, I'm always gonna try keep going for these pushes as long as I play this game and obviously the other thing is that I try go for the challenger first clears and these aren't always possible because a lot of the time um, my combat rating just isn't high enough because my resonance is just not that high and resonance does boost your combat rating considerably especially if you have 9k and above resonance. On my server at least there are quite a lot of players above 9k resonance or very close to 9k resonance and it just always gives me great pride when I'm able to get one of the challenger first clears because I like to show that lower resonance or mid resonance players can also get um, the first clears for challenge rifts. At the end of the day this is how I like to play the game and I believe that everyone playing this game should be able to play the game the way they like to enjoy it as long as they're not breaking any TOS or anything. As a side note, I don't really see much of this type of content on YouTube so I do think it makes for pretty interesting and varied content on the platform. So hopefully that's given some insight and kind of reasoning into why I go for these pushes. Is it worth it for most players? Absolutely not. And especially if you don't have much time to play the game, just logging in and doing your dailies and doing the clan and warband tasks is more than enough. Anyway, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say with regards to this topic. So moving on, I want to talk about my plan going into this week. So prior to this week, I had a look at what raids I had left and also the gauntlets that I had left. And I just used my Paragon calculator to see what Paragon I'd have to push to before pulling the trigger on these and I saw that I had Inferno 4 raids all saved first clears and also um, Gauntlet 6 saved so um, just putting the numbers in my calculator I saw that I'd have to reach Paragon 1296 and also be 2 million XP into the level. Unfortunately because I reached this target level very early into this morning I kind of saw that there weren't going to be many players around to help me with Gauntlet 6. So um, what I decided to do is go with my plan B, which is to basically uh, grind down the 2 million XP that I'd be missing from Gauntlet, and then I'd just pull the trigger on the 5 Inferno 4 raids that I have. So uh, that would make me have to grind a bit longer to Paragon 1297, and I'd have to be 500k into the level, which is basically what I ended up doing. Unfortunately, the grind was a bit longer than I would have liked, but sometimes things don't go according to plan, and sometimes you just have to go with your plan B. So as with my previous Paragon pushing video, I always like to check my level at 3am on Monday uh, just to see where I am. So um, you can see here that I'm 9 levels under the goal and I'm at 20% penalty. So what I always like to do first is claim everything which is affected by the penalty. So we've got the battle pass, we've got males and we've got the fish. So that's just what I'm doing here. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It's always super satisfying to finally be able to click all of these and claim them. So now I'm actually going to move on and claim all of my males. So almost all of these males give XP. Now it is reduced by the XP penalty, but it's still um, extremely useful once you have them stacked up. So here I have a combination of the Accursed Tower males as well as Shadow War and also Vigil of Blades. And also the Prediction males, which you get from predicting Shadow or Immortal every week. I don't have any Shadow Assembly, unfortunately, because my clan is currently Immortals. 
So unfortunately I had to do these one by one rather than just clicking claim all. And the reason for that is because I had a couple mailed with the Trial of Hordes chest, which lets you select a specific essence from the pool of essence that you're missing. And because I already had all the Crusader essence, I didn't want to claim this just yet. And unfortunately it is stuck to the class that you claim it on. So I'm just waiting until I switch class before I claim these two mails. And um, that's the reason why I have a few mails left over. Finally, I'm turning the fish in here. So I actually fished um, half mythic and half legendaries just because I was kind of getting impatient. But ideally you'd want to have all of them mythic because it does give substantially more XP than legendary fish. I ended at almost Paragon 1294 after claiming everything which is affected by the penalty. This is probably one of the best starts I've had um, for Paragon pushing. But since my goal is 1297, it would still take quite a while because I'd have to grind one 10% penalty level and two 5% penalty levels. And we also didn't have the 40% uh, extra monster essence for our clan because the tower season's reset. So this would actually take a considerable amount of time to do, even though it was only three levels on paper. So I got to work with the help of a couple of friends and after quite a lot of hours of non-stop grinding, I finally managed to do it and this is the moment where I turned in my last bestiary book. It felt really good to finally be able to finish um, the grind and kind of know that all I had to do now was clear some really easy Inferno 4 raids and I'd have Paragon 1300. So here you can see I'm actually slightly higher than the 500k which I um, wanted to go for. It's 511k but in these situations it's better to be safe than sorry. So after this I immediately went to do raids and I'm just going to show the last boss of Inferno 4 which is going to be the moment where I reach uh, Paragon 1300. So because this is a lower difficulty and I'm using my uh, raids build which I showcased on my channel this boss goes down really quickly. It's just the immunity phases which everybody hates where his health bar is grey and you can't really hit him. So I quickly want to give a shout out to my clan and my warband and everybody else who helped me push you know who you are. Thank you all so much for joining along on this journey. So right now I'm just clearing off these last few hive looking things so that the boss actually becomes targetable. And there we go guys, Paragon 1300, GG. So before I end, because I know a lot of people like seeing the gear upgrades from everything that I have unlocked in Inferno 6 and also the combat rating gains which I have, I'm going to be showing the before and after. So as you can see now, my combat rating is 34.4k. Now this isn't really my highest uh, combat rating setup. I mean, my set pieces aren't triple stat, but unfortunately I actually salvaged all of my uh, highest uh, set items because I just wanted to make some room in my uh, stash and inventory because I crafted so many pieces for Inferno 6 and I didn't have much space. But um, the legendary items which I am wearing are all triple stat and I've tried to get my CR as high as possible. This will probably be about, I don't know, 200 to 300 points higher um, under normal circumstances, but right now it's 34.4K. And let's just start equipping some of these items. So first of all, we've got this main hand here, 1802. So let's go ahead and get started with equipping some of these Inferno 6 uh, items. So unfortunately, I didn't manage to find any four stat magic uh, attributes. And um, it's kind of unfortunate because uh, the maximum combat rating now for legendary items is 1822 if you manage to find one of those items. But I did manage to find quite a lot of 1802 items, which is almost the maximum combat rating. And for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to have the highest uh, combat rating items. I'm not really going to pay attention to the magic attributes, but I rest assured I do have items with very good magic attributes, which I will be using for my challenge rift push, which I have coming later on. But as you can see, this doesn't have crit chance and most of these won't have crit chance, but I just want to see the highest combat rating that I can get. So let's just get started here. I'm going to equip this uh, main hand and the second main hand is also 1802. Let's equip it. So now with the off hands, I also have 1802. This one is also uh, 1802. So next is the chest. This one's also 1802 and it's extremely good. It has very good magic attributes, beneficial, damage reduction. It has uh, fortitude and willpower, so it's really good. I'm going to equip that one. So next we have the pants. So this one's only 1782, but I do have a wizard pants, which is 1802, which is really good with beneficial. And um, I will be switching to wizard, as you guys know, uh, just for a couple of days, just push challenge rift and also um, equip my highest CR gear. But for now, I'll be equipping this one, 1782, because this is the Crusader item. But next, we have the helmet, 1802. Let's go. So next, we have the shoulders, which is the only item from the legendaries, which isn't 1802. I found two of them, which are really good, but they're both 1782. 
I'm going to go for this one with primary attack damage and crit chance for now. Let's just go for that. So now let's move on to the set items. So for the gloves, I have 1782 Banquet with, with very good magic attributes. Unfortunately, only two sockets. Let's go for this one. Next, I have uh, Shepherd uh, Boots, which isn't really what I'm going to be using, but let's just go for these because they're 1802 for now. Um, next, we have Belt. This is from Feasting Barons. Um, it's a useful set, but also not the best because it's only two sockets, but let's just go for that one. And then we have the rings. Now, the rings I have are really, really good. I have two Vithu's rings, which are extremely good, but since we're only going to go for the highest combat rating item, this one's extremely good. It's a banquet ring with 1802. Damage to shielded enemies, damage taken from players reduced, and damage done to players increased with a blue socket. Let's go for this one. Then we have the Urge uh, ring, like I said, 1802. It has cooldown, it has damage done to enemies below 30% life, and it has damage done to players. It is a yellow socket, but still I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go for that. And then uh, this is the Gloom Guide Necklace. It is uh, 1802 as well. So let's just go for this. Uh, this one does have three sockets, so I'm actually very proud of it. And then as for the bracelets, I didn't actually manage to find any triple stat, uh, triple socket bracelets. So these are the best I managed to craft if you've seen my crafting video. So these are both uh, Banquet of Ice set. Um, let's just equip them. I'm probably going to end up using these for my challenge rift when I switch to uh, wizard. So now with all of that equipped, let's take a quick look at my new combat rating. So I actually gained almost 2000 combat rating points from going from Inferno 5 to Inferno 6. This is really, really good. And probably my combat rating is going to go up even higher because, like I said, my uh, pants is missing 20 combat rating here. And I'm also missing some upgrades on my uh, green set items because my highest challenge rift clear right now is only at 541. So um, I'm definitely going to get one more upgrade here. So probably I'm missing another, I don't know, 30 to 40 combat rating here. But um, with that said, guys, I'm actually going to be signing off here. I want to give myself as much time as possible to push challenge rifts and give you guys um, a video on that. To everyone who's pushing for Paragon 1300 this week, I want to wish you all good luck. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.